Hello, hello, hello everybody and welcome to episode number 98 of Minnows to Kings back here in San Marino with SS Cosmos. Now first of all, uh, an apology, it's been around about a week since I've released a video um, following the, the progress of SS Cosmos. Now I said at the end of the last episode it was uh, it was down to uh, me wanting to learn how to edit stuff a little bit better. Uh, it just hasn't happened to be honest. I, I've managed to do a couple of things uh, which you'll see pop up in the video. Uh, subscribe button and a... And a uh, Twitter thing they took me quite a long time to make because I'm not very good with computers uh, and doing stuff like that so I've obviously had to learn how to do it um, but yeah I've just been I've been super busy in real life um, I'm, I'm recording today it's actually uh, it's a day off work my my work has decided to close today is the day of the Queen's funeral uh, in the UK um, so there's a lot of places closed in the UK uh, but obviously that gives me some time to record i've actually got the funeral playing in the background obviously paying my respects to her majesty um but yeah so i i've managed to get some time in to, to record some stuff uh today is going to be a a quick sort of overview of the start of season 13 next episode is going to be the champions league group uh now i'm not i'm going to change the format up just a little bit uh, as opposed to doing you know, like three episodes of the groups where we do two games per episode. I'm actually going to do all six group games in the same episode and sort of edit it down um, a little bit better. Partly the reason for that is um, it's now September. We're nearing the end of September. It's the 19th, so about halfway through. Uh, so we've only got till November to try and get this save finished. So I'm trying to cut down on the episodes as much as possible. Um, obviously, it's going to teach me a little bit better edit editing as well when I do come to edit it. Uh, obviously, it takes a lot of time to edit stuff. Um, but yeah, so that that's going to be the format going forward. Uh, the group stages are now going to be condensed into one episode. Uh, obviously, anything after that, we will uh, we will take it as it comes. Um, but yeah, it's start of season 13. You can see here the reputation is still national. It hasn't improved, unfortunately. We've got our new kits with Versace now sponsoring us. And I have to say that these look absolutely awesome. Nine mains kit basher uh, absolutely does wonders. Uh, so let's have a look at where we were last time round. Let's start off with the San Marino League. We're up to 62nd in the league. Now that is an improvement over last season's 75th. So we've we've again increased the reputation of the league. Uh, we're in, we're still a long way to go. You know, we're still around the Polish first divisions, the Germany regional divisions. So that's just how far that we've got to go still. Uh, in terms of how the nation and the club are doing, um, San Marino, where are we? Uh, we are currently ranked 192nd in the world as a nation. Um, so obviously only Gibraltar and Liechtenstein below us. Uh, club coefficients in terms of San Marino, we're up to 20th. Uh, again, we're around about the 23.2 mark. Um, next season, it looks like it's going to be 24.8. No, sorry, it's at the minute it's going down uh, next season. Um, that's partly because we, we're not into the Champions League group stages yet, but we really need the other teams to start uh, turning professional, helping us out a little bit. We're not that far away from getting some more Champions League qualification places. We've only got to get to 17th. Um, 17th, and then we actually get to skip a stage. Uh, but once we get into 16th, we get an extra spot for the Champions League, uh, which could help. In terms of the club coefficients, we are ranked quite highly. Now, we, I don't even have to scroll down anymore. We're into 30th. Uh, which is really really good we've got a coefficient rating currently of 60 which is due to go down to 55 at the end of this season but of course like i said we haven't actually played the champions league group stages yet um and because we're so high up that actually generates us a little bit of revenue come the end of the season uh over the 10 year used for revenue we're currently sat in 41st uh, which is really really good and it actually pays out quite a fair bit for us um come the end of the season in terms of finances, we are currently sat with 60 million in the bank. We've got a transfer budget of 46 million. I'm way, way underneath the wage budget, which is which is great. I'm trying to save, um, trying to save some money for one that when I can get some big signings in. Uh, but we have spent a fair bit this season already. You can see the original budget was 32 million, and now we've got 46. So we've also brought some money in. Uh, so that is going to be the next step. It's going to be the transfers. Uh, and transfer history, we'll start with the outs. You can see there's quite a lot of outs. There's a lot of people who have left on a free. Uh, I will sort it by date. 
Uh, we'll start bottom to top. Lucas Santi has gone on loan to Trey Penny. So that is maybe the start of some of these San Marise clubs loaning some of our, our, our better, younger San Marise players. You can see for a San Marise player, he's not too bad as a winger, really. Uh, but we, we need to be letting them get some of our better players, really. Uh, Ralph Agbula has left on a free transfer. He's not played for us for a few seasons. Um, he has actually joined Burton Albion on loan, where he's played three games, uh, sorry, on a free, where he's played three games in the championship for them. Uh, Rodolfo Pinzon, again, didn't really feature for us. I think he, did he make an appearance? No, he didn't actually make an appearance for us. We did sign him on a free. He's gone on a free, so he's not really cost us anything. Um, it just wasn't really going to cut it in the squad. Um, same with Masaldi, again. He did sort of feature a little bit for us. Played eight games, scored five goals, seven games, no goals the next season. So, again, he's gone on a free. We did actually make a loss on uh, Mustafa there. But, you know, wage budget-wise, we'll probably be all right in the long run. Uh, Pantiog Panagiotis Kertiloglu has gone to Rudes or Rudes. I, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, young 19-year-old Czech central midfielder, again, not one who really featured for us. In fact, he didn't feature for us at all. So we have made a loss on him there. Uh, I think some of these players were brought in with the with the view to homegrown players, but they just weren't really going to cut it. Uh, Arnaldo, or Arnaldo has gone back to Brazil. No, he's in Portugal. He's in Portugal. Uh, again, a left-sided defender. Didn't actually feature for us. So another one gone. Kagri Unsal has joined Austria Vienna. Uh, another central defender. Just doesn't really have the attributes for us uh we got him on a free um so he's gone to, on the free to vienna he's actually gone on loan to Ant uh antalya sport in turkey ramiro sebastian now this is one of the big ones i was quite impressed by ramiro sebastian to be fair uh but river came in with a bid uh, we paid 2.2 million for him he's played 21 games scored 12 goals was here what six months uh, so we paid 2.2 million for him, but we've actually sold him for 8 million, where you can see he started off really well playing for River. Eight appearances and five goals. Uh, so this, for the young Spaniard there, I, I quite like him, but he he's natural here. I need him to be a natural here. Uh, and his finishing lets him down just a little bit for that, really. Um, but he's a decent player. But we, we like I said, we managed to bag 8 million for him. So I, I let him go, really. Uh, Franco Versta, again, one who I was when I did initially signed him, was quite excited about it, but he's actually played one game for us. Uh, so he has also gone, he has gone for 50k, so he, again, we made a profit there. <laughs> Not massive amounts, but you know, money is money. Stefan Milic, I was quite pleased to see the back of. He was on a very, very large wage uh, when he was with us. We paid £650,000 for us. He played eight games. Uh, so we've cut our losses with him, got him off the wage budget, which was the most important thing. Now, Kevin Engelhart, last season's starting defender, he was a good player for us, a very good player for us, uh, and I'm, he's got some really, really good physicals. He's got some good defensive attributes as well. Uh, but Shakhtar came in with 11.5 million. We paid 2.7. Um, so, you know, 21 games, 7.8 average rating. He actually did quite well in continental competition as well, with a 7.31 in continental competition. Uh, so Kevin Engelhart, the young German there, good player um yes we may miss him but it's it's 11 and a half million pounds in the bank uh we've also got a few players have gone on loan jorge medina the uh american has actually gone on loan to penarossa so there again that's maybe some of the influence coming through getting into the other san Marise clubs which is great uh luis eduardo has gone to mfc on free as has pablo felipe again players who didn't really feature for us Gustavo Cipriano initially was a, a regular starter for us when he came in for £2 million, uh, but last season didn't feature at all. So again, it's another one to get off the wage budget. We've, we've lost out money-wise um, with Gustavo there. Kevin Roberto has gone on a free. And Matthias Fischer has gone on loan to Penarossa. Again, another young player, German central defender, could do some good at Penarossa. Rian. Uh, the Brazilian, another one who didn't actually play a game for us, has also left a little bit of a loss on him. But again, not too worried about that. 
And finally, Jonathan Avenatti, our unambitious Uruguayan goalkeeper, has also joined Shakhtar for 12.7 million. Um, a good goalkeeper. Didn't like his unambitious thing, though. I really didn't like it. Uh, he was on a decent wage for us as well. He's on 30k now. But, uh, he, you know, he was a very, very good goalkeeper for us, was Jonathan. He was here for a number of seasons. Uh, but I couldn't turn down the 12.75 million, really. Uh, it's a, there's a little bit of balance in the books going on there as well. And uh, we've actually spent quite a fair bit of money, to be fair, which that's all the outs. We've made a total of 32 million. We've actually only spent 28 million. Uh, we'll start off with the first man in, which was Pedro Ramiro. Now, this is the replacement striker, uh, as you were. This is our new advanced forward, Pedro Ramiro, brought in from Freiburg. So gone the opposite way to uh, Avia. He's got some decent uh, decent um, stats over the seasons. You know, he's uh, he's 25 years old, so he's getting on a bit. But if we just have a look at his attributes here for an advanced forward. He's got great dribbling, great finishing. First touch is okay. Passing lets him down a little bit, but technique and work uh, technique is really good. Work rate, again, a little bit poor. But again, he's got some good, good uh, physicals there which is uh, really good. He's he's okay, personality-wise, fairly loyal, but he's uh, he's got some good player traits as well. Like to beat his opponent repeatedly. He's got 16 flair, uh, runs with ball often as well. Uh, and he started off quite well in the Champions League. Eight appearances, seven goals with three assists and a 7.93 average rating. So he is uh, he's quite a good player and I'm, I'm quite pleased to bring him in for the five million that we paid for him. Uh, next player in through the door was our record signing. It was... Yoon Yong Hee, a South Korean who we brought in from Brazil uh, for £14 million. Uh, now, this is our new advanced playmaker. He is a professional personality. Not sure about this uh, gets into opposition area, but we do play our advanced playmaker on attack, which if we have a look at the attributes for an attacking advanced playmaker, he's also consistent, which is good. Uh, but yeah, passing, 17. Technique, 17. Vision, 17. Teamwork, 17. Now, watching him in the Champions League, which, by the way, he's got five goals and six assists, watching some of the passes that he pulls off, um, it's been like a breath of fresh air for this team. And he's still got room to improve. He's 18 years old, so he can get homegrown status as well. So I was quite happy to pay the £14 million for him. Uh, it's a sign of the club going forward. You can see already that he is improving as well. Five foot six as well, so he's, you know, goes with that flair. Um he's quite a slippery character to be fair is the young South Korean he's already got three caps for South Korea as well at 18 years old uh, so I was quite quite happy to to bring him in his main interest is from Lazio so you can see the kind of player that we've actually signed here and uh, he is going to be staying with us for a little while uh, Mikko Amelsberger from Sturm Graz now 2.9 million with potential to 3.4 million he is our new centre half he is the replacement for Kevin Engelhart. Uh, if we compare the two with each other, if I can, I can. Uh, you can see that they, they, they're not too dissimilar to each other. Attribute-wise, again, I actually think that Amelsberger is a little bit better. Um, Engelhardt's slightly better uh, physically. But again, Mirko, 18 years old, can gain that homegrown status. He's fairly ambitious as well. Stays back at all times. Short, simple passes. Avoids a week. Yes, he's uh, he's a very good player. Six foot two. Great jump and reach. His heading is poor, to be fair, uh, but we are working on that. But tackling 16, marking 13, positioning 12. He's got okay pace. He's he's workable. He's got lots and lots of potential to reach as well. Um, so he is, again, the future going forward in terms of centre-half alongside Nunez. Now, Ricky, Moore, uh, Ricky North brought in from Borussia Mönchengladbach for 3.2 million, potential of 3.5 million is our new ball winning midfielder if we just have a look at him on ball winning midfielder on support 16 tackling 18 teamwork he's got some decent physicals 20 aggression 17 bravery which is what you want for your, your defensive sort of players he's got driven personality shoots with power not really for a, for a ball winning midfielder um marking lets him down a little bit passing lets him down a little bit but again 18 years old uh with lots of potential to improve Next in through the door was Matthias Fischer. He was a free transfer. He is, again, a centre-half, 18 years old. He's actually in the under-20 squad, so he's one with um, 
with room to improve. He's the one who's gone out on loan to Penarossa. So he could gain homegrown at Nation there. Kane Partridge came in from Calgary Foothills. These are some of the ones that I had, you know, pre-set up uh, a few years ago. He is not really going to cut the mustard with us. His eccentricity is 20. <laughs> Just look at his polygon down here. Uh, the young Canadian there, not not going to cut it really. Stefan John has come in on loan as a right fullback from Tottenham Hotspur. Uh, some good physicals. He's, he's okay. We're struggling at fullback position really to bring any players in. Uh, poor consistency, but he is fairly professional. 18 years old, room to improve. Uh, hopefully he can do okay for us. We do, still do have um, our other right back there as well. I've forgotten his name now, to be fair. Uh, Alberto Marin was another one coming for £3 million. This is the Avenatti replacement. This is our new goalkeeper. Lighthearted, which it's still not great, but it's better than unambitious. Uh According to this, he's reached his potential, 24 years old. If we compare him with Avenatti, though, uh, have a look at the overview. Polygon-wise, very, very similar again. Alberto, slightly better shot stopper. He's better aerial. He's better mentally. Not quite as quick or physical as uh, Jonathan was. But again, you know, quite evenly matched. So it's not really a downgrade. Um, and when you when you consider that we paid three million for him and we sold Jonathan for 12, uh, I think it's quite quite good bit of business to be fair so that is all the transfers i i am still in the transfer window so i can still bring some more players in but uh, this that is not our starting lineup i've obviously had an injury to amelsberger or something like that um this the cabrera either is not the starting lineup we've got uh, cesarini back in on loan from uh, from torino of course to play left back uh, so this is pretty much the starting lineup for the season. It's going to be Marin in goal. It's then going to be either John or Alfaro uh, as the right fullback. Of course, Alfaro was our own player. That's the name I was trying to remember a minute ago. But his crossing really, really lets him down. Uh, so it's going to be John. It's going to be Nunez, who, by the way, is under. He he's been under constant bid all summer from teams like Juventus, Arsenal, Tottenham, Torino. Napoli he is he's wanted let's put it that way um, I, and he actually got quite unhappy that I wouldn't let him talk to some of these clubs uh, he's changed his mind about that no he's now happy to stay at the club he's still coming under bid the 19 year old Peruvian with potential still to gain he's got some really really crazy physicals his defending attributes as well are also really really good uh, so I'm hoping to keep hold of him for as long as possible he can still gain that homegrown status as well uh, Amelsberger, we've already been through. Cesarini on loan from Torino. Iryashev is going to be the regista for this season. Got some good, good attributes. 19-year-old, homegrown status, room to improve. Fairly professional, consistent. What more can you ask for? Ricky North, we've already been through. Uh, Yun Yong, he, again, already been through. Alfonso is still here. Jeremias Alfonso, our previous record holder at 5.5 million for the highest transfer fee paid. He is going to be our advanced playmaker on... No, he's not. He's our central midfielder on attack, isn't he? Some good attributes again for that position. Fairly ambitious, consistent. Pretty good. Pretty good, to be fair. According to this, he's reached his potential, but then it says he can still improve. He's still only 20 years old as well. Uh, Esteval Chirillo, another one who's been under a few bids this season. Our pressing forward, our 20-year-old. Again, some, some good attributes, consistent, fairly professional, which I like. And then Ramiro, again, we've been through. Uh, so in terms of qualifying for the Champions League, it's been a little bit of a mixed bag this season. We've had some uh, poor results. You can actually see there's a loss there, um, which for the first time in a long time in the Champions League qualifiers, we've actually lost the game. But we started off against a Pristina, who are a Kosovan club, uh, with a 3-0 win at home. Yon Young Hee and Marco Selva getting the nod there. Chirillo was still recovering from his broken leg. Marco Selva, by the way, for, for a Samarize player, is looking really, really, really good. And he's more than capable of being a third-choice striker for us. Uh, we then went to Kosovo, picked up a 4-0 win there. Pedro Romero, Alfie Moon, Yon Young Hee, and then it was an own goal. Uh, took on Maccabee Tel Aviv in the next round. Thankfully, uh, we got a decent result at home uh, with a 4-0 win. Marco Selva and Pedro Romero grabbing a brace each. Uh, we then went to Israel and disappointingly were beaten 2-1. Um, 
Martin Nunez getting the only goal of the game for us. Uh, we then took on the New Saints, TNS, the Welsh club, away from home, first time round with Pedro Ramiro bagging a brace, Marcus Selva and Yong, uh, Yoon Yong Hee. I'm just going to call him Yong Hee. Uh, it's a bit of a tongue twister that to, when, you, when you're trying to say it fast. Um, yeah, 4-1 win away from home. Then at home, it was again, it was another disappointing result. It was a victory, but it was 3-2. We conceded two goals against TNS. So Martin Nunez, Jeremias Alfonso and Pedro Ramiro. Uh, we then were drawn against Dinamo Zagreb, probably the toughest comp uh, opponent that we've had in this playoff. Uh, it was a one-all draw away in Croatia there. Uh, Martin Nunez again getting on the score sheet. Amelsberger was sent off. Uh, but then we brought Dinamo back to our place and we absolutely thumped them 7-0. Pedro Romero, Chirillo getting a double. Yong Hee a double. Nunez again on the score sheet and then Marco Selva finishing off. Pedro Romero actually picked up an injury in that game as well but as you can see I think he no he's still injured. He is still injured. He is out for six days to three weeks uh, with a pull calf muscle. Is it a pull calf? Yes a pull calf muscle. Uh, so it's been a little bit of a mixed bag in terms of qualifying and now I'm, I'm going to put this down to a lot of new players uh, and them bedding, in, bedding into the tactic. You can see tactical familiarity is getting up a little bit now. Uh, but I'm quite excited about what this team can do in the Champions League. And that leads us on to the next point, which is the Champions League a group draw. It's ready for today. One thing I have mentioned over the last couple of seasons is the seedings. We are now a third seed with Borussia Dortmund, Porto, Salzburg. Uh, with our 60 coefficient rate in there, we're actually quite far into the third seeds. Uh, which means that there's some weaker teams below us. Now, Genk we've beaten before, many seasons ago. Bodo, or Bodo, I, I'm not sure how to say it. Uh, again, we've beaten before. There's there's some beatable teams here, very beatable teams. Benfica we've beaten a couple of times. So now the fact that we are a third seed could potentially lead us to a slightly easier draw in the group. Um, but still, I think our aim, when you look at these other teams that are second seeds, I think our aim is still a third place in the group minimum uh, but let's get the draw underway anyway and let's just see who we're going to come out against this season PSG did win the Champions League by the way um, that's what the little star is there it's, it denotes the previous winner of the competition um, so yeah hopefully we, we get a quite a favourable draw here it would be nice to reach the latter stages of the Champions League rather than having to rely on the Europa League for, to, to, to gain our coefficients but you know we're still going in the right direction Hopefully I can edit it properly. I I want to know because I've said I'm doing all six games in one episode. That doesn't mean the episode's going to be three hours long. Uh, anyway, we're into the third season now. So let's see where we're going to come out. Uh, not this. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, man. I think we've got the hardest group there. Uh, that's uh, That's quite disappointing. I wonder who the fourth team is going to be. Bodo or Bodo. Right, Bodo is beatable. Arsenal knocked us out last season. Real Madrid, we all know how good Real Madrid are. Uh, yeah, so the aim. Look, Bodo have got a better reputation than us. Uh, this is their key player. <laughs> we have to beat Bodo, basically. We have to beat Bodo in both games uh, to get that third place in the group because. That's going to be the aim, isn't it? We're not going to we're not going to be beating Arsenal, are we? Um, he's a good player, very good player. <laughs> Real Madrid. Kylian Mbappe is still kicking around at the thirty-four year old. He hasn't lost any of his pace yet either. Ah, uh, that is a that's a shocking group draw for us. That is absolutely shocking. Uh, yeah, the episodes they're not they're not going to be three hours long. I'm going to edit them to the point where they're about the same length as a normal episode. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more work on my point, from my point of view. Um, but I think it's going to be worth doing it. So the first game is going to be a Real Madrid Arsenal. Then with double header against Bodo Arsenal, and then we finish off against a Real Madrid. So a tough tough group there. Uh, I don't think I've got anything else to go over in this episode. The under 20 squad is filling up quite nicely. There's a few players in on trial. These must be players who have agreed to sign already. Yes, they, you can see they've all got transfers next to them. So these guys are all joining. Uh, we've got our 
I, th- I believe these were some of our, our youth intakes with the four and a half star potential. He's not too bad, is he? 16 year old. He's Italian, though, which doesn't really help. I need the San Marise players. This is the best San Marise one. 15 year old Claudio Mularoni, a centre half with a good jumping reach, but other than that, not the greatest. But he has got room to improve. Uh, so these, these are basically. Improve them in our training facilities, loan them out to the other clubs in San Marino, uh, which is which is what we need to do really because we need some of these other clubs who are in the European competitions uh, to catch up to us. Penarossa was one of them, and how did they do? They were 5-0 losers to Basel uh, on aggregate, so there's no coefficients going in there from Penarossa, or very few anyway. Uh, Folgore, another one. Actually picked up a draw against Marabo at home. So they've only lost 2-1 on aggregate. So that, you know, that's a little bit of coefficients there with the draw. They're not too far away from getting through to the next round there. And it was Virtus Aquaviva, the other team. They 3-0 losers to Shelbourne on aggregate. So again, coefficients wise, not really helping us out. The kits, by the way, the kits are absolutely fantastic. I've did a, done a kit for every San Marino team again. Um, some of the, the just what Nymane has done with that kit basher thing is absolutely fantastic, uh, and I really really like it. La Ferita, the the kits don't look the same this time around. They are the same colours still. That's maybe something that I can change um, for next season when I do the kits. But yeah, the kits are really really nice. I just need some of them to turn professional. Need some of them to turn professional. Uh, Sanjay, I like that. I really like that with that Maserati in it. It's uh, it, it suits it really well, doesn't it? A Trey Fiore's looks okay. A Trey Penny again looks okay. Uh, right, that's it, guys. That is the preview to season thirteen, uh, where obviously we are looking to dominate in San Marino again. We're looking to do okay uh, in the Champions League. Uh, next episode is going to be the group stage at the Champions League, though. Um, but yeah, guys, thanks again for watching. Thanks for the support on the channel and for these Cosmos videos. Uh, as always, I've been Dean and I will see you all for the next episode. <laughs>